What would it be like if you had the power to make your life happen instead of having life happen to you? I'm Coach Joelle and my job is to bring people the practical tools that allow you to access the magic of a life lived on purpose. Now when I use this word magic, I'm not messing around here. <laughs> there really is this wonder to life, this, this magical series of events and occurrences that happen when you're intentional, on purpose, living your truth, living from your heart, thinking about what you want instead of what you don't want. Now, I haven't always been in the magic camp, let me tell you. I consider myself to be a very practical person. And uh, while I'd heard about things like the power of positive thinking, I wasn't buying it. I was not willing to think that I just have to think happy thoughts and everything's going to work out. That, that just didn't work for me. So I went looking for my own way, my own truth, how to make life work, you know, how to be happy. And I found this thing called coaching. And I loved coaching because coaching was very practical. There are these tools and these process, processes and these methods that explained how to make life work. It was really powerful. But it's interesting. As I started using these tools and these processes in my life and the life of my clients, lo and behold, the magic started showing up. And it became more and more prevalent. The more focused we were, the more we set goals, the more we cleared our thoughts and stayed focused on what we wanted, the more life just seemed to help out. And it got so uh, frequent and amazing that I just started writing it down in my serendipity log. I just started writing down all the little coincidences, all the serendipities, until the evidence was overwhelming. The world is a magical place. And I knew that that was going to be my life, finding out how to access that magic and sharing it with others so they could do the same. Now, even with that knowing, I still get taken, uh, my breath still gets taken away by those moments where the magic shows up powerfully. And I wanted to share one story about how I met my husband. So, um, several years ago, and I was done with the whole dating thing, was not working for me. <laughs> I was ready to get married and not just married, but married like, like monumental love that, that they write songs about, right? So being a good coach, I set an intention and I declared it. And I actually declared it in front of 350 people on a stage and I said, I will meet the man I'm going to marry in the next 12 months. Then I went out to do the work, the internal work and getting out in the world to make it happen. And one of the things that I did, this is one of those practical tools, was I created my manifesto. <laughs> and I actually got together with a friend, and we had candles and tea and music, and we set an intention. And then we wrote out our heart's desires on the pages of our journals. And I wrote about this man I would meet, and how he'd make me feel, and how he'd treat my family, and uh, the way he'd love me and the way that I'd love him, who I'd be with him. I wrote until everything was out of me. And then I sent that out into the world as well. So, fast forward a few months. Lots went on in between, but I only have seven minutes here, so. Flash forward. I ended up coming to a point where I had a lot of men in my life, and they were coming at me from all over the country. But one caught my attention in particular. I actually have the notes still from, uh, from what I wrote about him. And I wrote, Jeff Ohio loves people, animals, adventure, a perfect match. Well, Jeff Ohio reached out to me and we started courting, right? Um, but we were courting across 2,000 miles. He was Jeff Ohio. I was Joelle, Arizona. Uh, and lo and behold, we fell in love without ever meeting. So after a couple of months of being madly in love with someone we'd never met, we decided to have our first date. And he was scheduled to come out and see me in February. Um, as it turns out, he had a sick cat, so he couldn't come see me. But, loves animals, that was in the manifesto, so we were good. Then he was said to come out in March. Sick him. <laughs> he got sick, his doctor said you can't travel. And while we were so disappointed, he said, Joelle, I promise you, I will be there 
April 6th. No matter what happens, you can expect me. I've rebooked my flight. I'll be there on April 6th. Okay. So it was a couple days before it was supposed to arrive, and I was at my favorite coffee shop beside my favorite bookstore in Tempe, Arizona. And I was sitting there in the sunshine, and I was going through my goals book, just intending to complete on all these goals. And I was excited to see that I'd done this one, I'd done that one, I'd done that one. I was finished with all these goals, all these accomplishments. But there, on the second to last page, was the declaration about meeting the man I was going to marry. But I didn't say in the next 12 months. I actually wrote down, I will meet the man I'm going to marry by April 6, 2005. And when I saw that, and I knew that my friend who had canceled on me twice was coming out on April 6th. It took my breath away. I had some tears that day. And I knew that you really want to watch what you're thinking and what you're focusing on because it matters big time. So Jeff and I were engaged that New Year's. We got married on uh, February 14th, a couple of months um, after that, so a little bit more than a year after we met. And while we're not perfect, we're definitely perfect for each other. So I, what I want to leave you with is just this idea that why don't you just open yourself up? That maybe, just maybe, life isn't as practical as you think. And if you start watching, for the miraculous, you just start watching for the magic of life, you just might get to have some of it. And let me tell you, when you live from that place, life becomes one heck of a ride.